Hi, this is Landon Bryce from ThoughtCast.com, and it is March 30th, 2012. The date matters because the Autistic Self-Advocacy Network, in partnership with some other um, organizations, is um, sponsoring and organizing a series of vigils uh, for disabled people who have been murdered by their caretakers and fam uh, and family members. Zoe Gross uh, organized the first of these, which took place in um, Sunnyvale, California, for specifically for George Hodgins, who was a 22-year-old man uh, who was autistic, who was shot and killed by his mother, who then killed herself. Um, I think it's very important, it was important to me at the vigils that what I, at the vigil that I was at, that what I focused on was George and how he should still be alive. And today, I guess I want to talk about how society is much more brutal than we'd like to admit. Um, and we have a real drive to conformity. And when someone is too different, the messages that we send to that person and to the people around them is that that person should not be here, that that person should not exist or should be dead. Um, one of the things that's wrong with the way that we talk about the death of George Hodgins and the deaths of other disabled people is that what is communicated to disabled people like myself, to autistic people like myself, is that we are a problem in need of a solution and that death is a is a solution. It might not be a, a desirable one, but it um, it is a solution. Um, again, um, the tragedy of George Hodgins life is that it ended when he was 22 by his mother's hand. It's not that he was born. Um, autistic people, disabled people don't belong dead. Um, when things get too painful for me, I either need to dress them very directly, straight on, or very indirectly. And one of the very indirect ways that I deal with these things is um, I uh, through old movies um, and songs and poems and things that I run over and over uh, again in my head and with or play over and over again on YouTube. One of the the scenes that I've been playing over and over again on YouTube this week is the very end of, of Bride of Frankenstein. One of my favorite movies, one of the best movies. Um, I, I relate very strongly to the Frankenstein monster, um, I think, because of my... Uh, I just... I've never really felt like I fit in. Like, I... I've never really felt like a real person, you know. Um, because... Parts of, you know, the things that people like to talk about, you know, just make you human. Um, you know, connection to other people. Um, and it, do not come as readily to me as they do to some others. Um, and I think really that's what I most relate to the Frankenstein monster about. Uh, and of course, um, I, you may have seen the movie Gods and Monsters, and uh, you may know that uh, the guy who directed the the original Frankenstein movies, James Whale, was gay, and he put a lot of gay subtext into the films, um, which I know is one of the reasons I also relate specifically to Bride of Frankenstein, which is an incredibly gay movie for 1932, I think it's from, um, when they actually, um, you know, uh, Hollywood was clamping down on itself um, in order to avoid uh, government censorship. At, at the very um, 
end of the movie, um, there's um, the, <laughs> the super gay Dr. Uh, Pretorius and Dr. Frankenstein have created a bride, a mate for the monster. And, um, oh, spoiler, by the way, you should have already seen The Bride of Frankenstein. It's short. Go watch it before you watch the end of this. Anyway. Um, and, and the bride, um, immediately, um, yeah, the, the monster holds out his hands and says, friend, friend. And she, uh, immediately goes, yeah, rejects it. <laughs> and, um, and so, um, he decides, the monster, um, decides that, uh, he, the bride, and Dr. Pretorius should die, but that Dr. Frankenstein and his wife Elizabeth should live. Um, it's a very curious decision, um, because, um, well, the freaks die, and, uh, the two monsters and Dr. Pretorius, who's very heavily coated as gay, um, the monster says, we belong dead. And blows up the whole monster laboratory tower and they, they die. And that, that, that's the message so often that we get, is that we belong dead. Is that those of us who are too unusual... Um, I'm also going to um, link in this the, the piece uh, for this video to uh, a clip from the chill, uh, to a clip from the celluloid closet, which is a 1995 documentary about gay people in in movies. Um, and the, in this segment, they talk about the Children's Hour, which is a movie about a little girl who accuses two of her teachers of being lesbians. And um, it ends, again, spoiler alert, you don't have to watch a children's hour. Um, and it ends with one of them, who's played in the 1962 movie by Shirley MacLaine. Um, it turns out that she really does have feelings for her friend, and she kills herself. And um, in this clip, it's really magnificent because Shirley MacLaine talks about how clueless they were when they made the movie and about how they did it wrong. And, and then Susie Bright talks about how she knows it's ridiculous the way that the movie ends with, with one, of the, one of the women killing herself, but the message still gets to her. Um, I think it is, it, it, I think it's amazing the progress that we've made in 70 years, or, uh, 80 years since The Bride of Frankenstein was made in terms of not not sending people who are different because of the kind of people that they fall in love with the message that they simply should should not be here um, yeah even the very um, the very very aggressive uh, anti-gay people now no longer you know talk about wanting to make homosexuality illegal um, they and and they no longer are willing to sit, to use the very very aggressively almost violent rhetoric that they once used um and this gives me great hope for what could happen for people who are autistic i i think that we will reach a time I think we can reach a time, I guess I'm not confident enough to say that we will, when no one will look at 
a mother who kills her autistic child and say, um, well, probably for the best this way. The way they used to say when a gay kid killed himself. Um, and because I've dealt with these topics, I guess I need to say specifically to you that you do not belong dead, that you have contributions to make, that I value you and I'm often very ambivalent about not about I, I often want to kill myself. Um, because my life is difficult and painful and um, scary. And because I gave as much as I could for as long as I could and I ended up feeling like I had nothing left to give. I guess my point here is that I understand Elizabeth Hodgins maybe better than, uh, than some people might think that I do. And I choose to stay around because I think the difference that's been made for gay kids who are growing up today is so extraordinary. And because I think there have to be people, as many of us as there can be now, who are fighting for the same kind of change for autistic kids today. And even if things are so overwhelming for you that maybe you can't envision a life that you would want to live. I need you to stay and help me fight. So please do.